You thought it was dead, but apparently it's not quite. Coal coming out of the ground in Colorado once again. Stan Dempsey from Colorado Mining Association. Glad to have you here. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Now, coal was dead. We had a regulatory state that was going to kill coal. We had EPA administrators ready to make sure coal never happened. We were going to make sure there was never a coal-powered power plant again anywhere on the universe. But I'm hearing coal numbers continue to rise nationwide and in Colorado. Well, we're very fortunate in Colorado. We're, we're in the first quarter of this year, we've already seen an, uh, an increase of production of a million tons. What is that as a percentage? Well, we we produce 12 million tons a year. So that's a huge percentage. It is, and we we were down though uh, from la last year. We, um, we we dropped five million tons. So, uh, well, we you look great. It must be the exercise. The <laughs> what what drives this? How much of this can be credited? Uh, to the new administration? I think the new the Trump administration has done a tremendous amount, first and foremost, um, to take the, the regulatory boot off the industry's throat. Talk to me a little bit about that regulatory boot. I mean, we knew they were coming after coal. There was a war on coal, There's, and that war's not gonna go away. Administrations change, and mm -hmm. it's gonna flip all over again. What I found most disturbing about what the EPA was doing is it was, I believe, extra legal. That is, I don't think they had the rights to do a lot of the things that they were doing, uh, which means lawsuits and lawsuits and lawsuits, including the Clean Power Plan that fortunately was, was stayed by the Supreme it Court. It appears that the Supreme Court was going to agree right. on that issue. And the Trump Agree with my position. Exactly. That they, they overreached. Exactly. Yeah. And um, you know, that was gonna continue to be a legal battle. The Trump administration has promised to review that initiative, and it appears that that, that will change dramatically if they do anything with, with carbon in that regard. But Congress has stepped into the action using the Con Congressional Review Act. They repealed the uh, stream protection rule, which was originally a rule designed to deal with mountaintop removal of, of mountains in Appalachia, but it applied in Colorado, and it would have had the effect of really harming underground mines and surface mines in Colorado. Um, it was a rule that didn't have, it shouldn't have been applied to Colorado. Congress, by using that statute, repealed that rule. Um, and that's tremendous um, in terms of, of, of providing a kind of wind in our sails to say, you know, the coal industry is viable, and now we're seeing the results. Talk to me a little bit about the employment issue. A couple years ago, a year ago, we were dealing with, around Craig, the Colo, I always get this wrong. Sure. Colo, Wyoming. Yep. Is that right? Mine, Colorado, mm -hmm. Wyoming mine, which was a, an incredible deposit of, of coal and looked like hundreds and hundreds of miners were going to be out of, out of work. Has that changed at all? Well, the, the, the federal government has approved the Colorado's lease expansion, and now um, that mine will continue to be able to go forward and develop those coal reserves, which are important not only to Colorado's energy future, but our nation's energy future. But there are other, other mines in Colorado that are going through the same process. If they don't get approval to, to have additional federal leasing, they're not gonna make it. They're gonna have to eventually shut down. Um, there are projects in near, near Steamboat Springs at the 20 mile mine, there's a lease expansion application. In Durango, the GCC mine's going through the same project, same process, as well as the West Elk mine in the North Fork Valley. That project is critical because we've already lost two mines in the North Fork Valley. That's the area in Gunnison County, Delta County, that's already experienced a thousand jobs. Help lost. me understand the market, just as a, as a layman. Mm -hmm. So you're, you've increased production or uh, coal sales, uh, what, eight, nine percent in a year. It's market improvement. Sure. Where's it all going? Who's buying it if we have fewer coal powered plants around? Where does Colorado's a lot of this go? Is, a lot of this is export markets, and there to, are to mar in, both in the United States. We've even heard of one set of utilities reconsidering their decision in terms of not only what kind of coal to use, but um, you know perhaps revisiting their decisions on using gas. That was one of the stories that my, one of my members mentioned to me that they they made the wrong decision and they're reconsidering going back to coal because now coal prices are remarkably low and. and Coal price and stable and stable. This is the part that uh, people don't get with the economics of, of power, right. is that coal is a stable price. It you is do a long term contract. Yeah, you could. It's you know, it's three cents a ton or whatever. Uh, Twenty years ago, it's three and a half cents a ton. Now it's 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 and it's, it's those escalators are usually built in or right. They, or, now where, whereas natural gas goes up and down uh, much uh, larger. Well, and before two thousand nine, natural gas was extremely volatile. 
Right. Um, and now I think with the economy having gone south in 2008, 2009, natural and, and gas, and the new and as well as, as increased production, right. certainly those dynamics change. But it's still one of the things that's exciting for natural gas is the ability and the interest to export natural gas. That's the internationalization of that market. That's only going to raise the price of natural gas, which I think is good for Colorado, but maybe not so good for, Col for, for Coloradoans who, who are using that natural gas in the utilities at a depressed price. Um, but, but it allows, you know, we, we believe natural gas and coal should compete on the open marketplace. We don't believe government should be taking sides, and that's one of the key issues for us. So where, where does the Colorado coal go? I just yanked it out of the ground, destroyed all sorts of lives, ruined the environment, and now it goes into a truck. Where does it go? Well, sometimes it goes into a train, and, it, and, and some of the mines, we call them direct mouth mines. They, those, are, those are mines that are really there adjacent to a coal-fired electric power plant. You know, think of uh, the power plant in Craig. It's supplied by the Trapper and the Colorado mine. Um, the, uh, the so in other words, where, where, directly where right you there. mine it, you turn it into. Exactly. I've heard, and tell me if I'm right on this, uh, I think it was like South Dakota has really heavy, almost wet coal, mm -hmm. making it harder to ship because it's heavier. Mm -hmm. So they, instead of transporting the coal, they just transport the electricity because sure. electrons are a lot lighter. And so they, they, they burn it there. I've also heard, and tell me if this is right, that a lot of American coal goes overseas. It does. And, that's, and that is something that you know, the many environmental activists have tried to shut down. You know, you've seen these fights around the coast, the Oregon and California coast, of saying, we don't even want to get coal out of this country. We don't want to see it burned in other markets. But it, 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 it tells me so much about the incentive structure in that the war on coal has been so successful that it's actually economical to pull coal out of the ground uh, in places like Colorado, put it on a diesel train, <laughs> send it to the coast, put it into a big diesel boat, have that diesel boat polluted all the way over, and bring it to China where it gets on another diesel train and then goes to some power plant where it's burned in a much less efficient and less environmental way. And somehow all of that is less expensive right. than burning the coal right here. Because what's happened is legislatures and regulators, and even in Colorado, the Public Utilities Commission has come up with this concept of social cost of carbon, which artificially changes the economics of using one fuel or the other. This whole concept is designed to disadvantage coal, particularly as we look forward to future utility planning. It's yeah, designed uh, that's to do why, that. That's why when I hear all the, the fluffiness of how renewables are, are so cost competitive, mm -hmm. well, when you jack up right. the prices of, of coal and you subsidize all the prices yes. of wind farms and all the rest, then all of a sudden you look at this, but it has been so distorted to, to get rid of an open market. Listen, I don't care how we get our electricity. I want it to be done in an environmentally sound way, but I want the choice mm -hmm. to get the lowest price. And, and that, that means coal. And that's At least right. for the foreseeable future, I think that's gonna change over time as technology changes. Exactly, and we're still 55% of Colorado's electric generation comes from coal. That's the good news. And um, we are looking forward to trying to develop new carbon sequestration techniques. Uh, we want to find ways to use coal as cleanly as possible. But remember, we've invested billions of dollars in pollution control equipment over the last 30 years um, to eliminate emissions as much as we can. And those are costs that are being paid for by ratepayers. But there's still an effort, and there was an effort in this General Assembly to um, incentivize the early retirement of assets that we as ratepayers are paying for and then to securitize well, those. I love, I love the way you talk, you're very lobby-like. Ah. I mean, they were trying to securitize the, uh, no, they were trying to kill coal. Yes. Let's, let's put it, That's the, right. the legislature was trying to a way to make sure that coal-fired power, power plants go away and get replaced by something else. Well, we hear elected officials and say, we want to create a package of incentives or right. we want to help these local communities. And you know, while we don't want to hurt those communities any more than they're hurt by, by saying we oppose that, we do want to make sure that elected officials, and I know Senator hey. Michael Bennett introduced a bill last week, why create the harm in the first place. Right. Yeah, so Michael Bennett's trying to put together a, a bill to, to help the people he has di displaced mm -hmm. by all the anti-energy legislation and regulation. 
I just, I wish they could be honest and say, we're doing this to choke you guys to death. And now, thanks to a little relief, you guys are coming back. Do you think, do you think coal is here to stay a little bit longer? Well, I think the big, the big fight in the next two years is going to be what the federal government's doing to relieve that regulatory burden and to help domestic energy production versus what some states, even like Colorado, are doing. Um, the governor announced this executive order that I think you've discussed with other guests, um, and you've seen the PUC take action. So I think individual states may detract from that effort. It'll be interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Listen for me on KHOW Radio. Read me in the Denver Post. Check out the Independence Institute at thinkfreedom.com, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.